Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to more of The Legacy, Realm of Terror. Now, we had a long couple of videos last time. We went down into some of the lower levels. We even screwed around in the ethereal plane for a little bit. But we earned ourselves a number of nice treasures, including our enchanted katana here. We're now ready to move on to the secret fifth level. I only say secret because you can't just walk up to it. You gotta find the secret way to get there. And it all has to do with this painting. We're gonna take this jewel that we found way earlier in the game and put it in the pendant. And the portrait burns away, revealing a door. Now, you may notice I've collected all five of the Chinese coins and I have the Karsis heart. I also have the Astral Globe, the Astrolabe, and the Mine Effigy. We're going to need the Mine Effigy because we're going to get teleported up to the secret fifth level. And if we don't have the Mine Effigy, we get hurt. Now, isn't this a pleasant looking place? Traces of blood are splattered over this pillar. You can see there's a number of chains floating around and bits of body parts. The head has been ripped off from the body of this zombie. Alright, now we can either move forward or we can move backwards. Well, since the eyes are in the front of our heads, we have to move forward. But, these chains are in our way. We have to time it so that we're moving forward just as the chains are moving out of our way. Now, I don't have the best of luck with this, so let's see what I can do. Alright, now we actually made it even though it may not look like we did. So let's back out. And you can see that we are in a whole new area. Uh, before we start exploring, I have a lot of experience, so I want to use some of it. I think we're going to give ourselves a little bit of stamina and some more meditation. And that will probably be good for that. I would put more in the spells, but... I don't think we have enough experience. Now, we want to be careful moving around this area. I'll show you why in a moment. There we go, there's a meditation crystal. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop everything we don't need in here for the time being. We'll be using this astrolabe very soon. Um, yeah, let's just take the crystal. And I see somebody walking around over there. I also see an item here on the floor. This is the horn skull. An aura of magic emanates from this demonic horn skull. Back in the museum, there was a pedestal for the horn skull. There was also a pedestal for the Hand of Glory, and I thought for sure if I brought back both the Horned Skull and the Hand of Glory to those pedestals, something would happen. Well, nothing happened. In fact, the Horned Skull is bad. We don't want to carry that around. That will stop us from casting spells. And look, it's our buddy back from the museum. But now, he's not our buddy. He's attacking us with his knife. In fact, I'm not entirely sure that is our buddy, and that's not just like an illusion of him. These black hooded robes are embroidered with a mystic symbol. Let's just pick it up and take a look at it real quick. Come on, drop the armor. I know you don't want it. Now, these robes are actually going to protect us from some of the harm that can befall us down here. Let's see if I can find what I'm talking about. Nope, 
the safe is empty. The Working Notes of Nathan Prentice, Volume 2, June 1962. I and my acolytes of doom have completed the rites of forbidding. We have left the mark of... Uh, why is this? I don't know. In many places within the temple. The mark is death to all trespassers. While we, acolytes, clad in the likeness of the mark, clad in the likeness of the mark, may pass safely. We alone know that the mark acts through the eyes. Its power, its power lies in its very aspect. Well, that's what I was about to start trying to show you guys. We're going to see marks on the wall that look a lot like the mark we have here on our, our robes. And if we look at that, that uh, symbol, we get hurt. But if we're wearing the robes, we do not get hurt. But the truth is, I prefer to have the armor. Because there are monsters around here. I'd rather have the armor to deal with the monsters. Alright. We just stepped on a pressure plate. We're going to want to find four pressure plates just like that. We want to make sure we only step on them once each. Alright, this door is locked. It would be nice if I could hotkey my spells. Alright. Now this is the Ghetto Blaster. A portable stereo tape player with two-way, four-speaker system, plus bass booster. Continuous playback and auto-stop. Well, we're going to try to switch it on and off. It seems to be damaged, so let's grab it and try to repair it. Nope, it's all broken. Alright, now it's repaired. Alright, now it's playing. We got this funky beat. It's going to stay with us for the rest of this level. Now this isn't just, you know, a fun gag. There's a reason for this. Oh, first aid kit. As you try to pick up the first aid kit, it disappears. We're actually going to find a lot of items that are just illusions on this level. But back to the Ghetto Blaster. We want that because it disrupts the attacks of the enemies on this level. So as long as we're carrying this around, enemies are going to have a harder time hitting us. That, combined with all the spells and protection I have, we should be safe. Now, there's one of those symbols. We're looking at it right now, but we're not getting hurt. And that's fine. It only will hurt us if we're looking at it and we approach it. So if I approach it not looking at it, we're fine. If I actually look at it while I'm next to it, we take damage. Ah, what do we have here? As you try to pick up the chainsaw, it disappears. Yeah, we can get ourselves a chainsaw, and we can evil dead it up around here. But, but the sword we have right now is probably the most powerful weapon in the game. I don't know for sure one way or the other, so if anybody can correct me, I'd appreciate it. And here are our enemies. Mummies. These horrible mummy creatures. They're pretty tough. Oh, what do we have here? A crystal flute. Carved from a single piece of crystal, this flute looks very valuable. But we're going to need that, so let's grab it. We're also going to need these batteries. These batteries will power the Ghetto Blaster, so if we run out of juice, we'll be able to reuse it. More mummies. See, we're making short work of them with our katana. I don't want to 
want a normalized size, I want my katana. I want my Japanese sword. Alright, there's two of the pressure plates. Oh, there's another symbol. Here comes a mummy. So let's deal with the mummy first. the symbol, and there's another one. The door is locked. At this point in the game, most of the doors are going to be locked. Well, nothing interesting in here. Be careful. Keep our eyes open for those symbols. And mummies. Not even the cool mummies from Mummies Alive. A message written in blood. Every 50 years, the stars meet. The golden torch is brought back. Winthrop dies, and a new gate opens. Soon it will be time to open the final gate, and when the beast, Belphegor, will be able to span the void and appear on Earth. The stars are almost met. The golden torch of Gothica, of Gothula, is here, and soon the last of the Winthrops will arrive. But they have forgotten about me. I am a Winthrop. I must also die if they are to succeed. And that can never happen. I know, not the best music for such an ominous message. A sarcophagus. The stench of death and decay hangs in the air around this sarcophagus. Well, the reason for that there's mummies in there. But we can handle a mummy. And that mummy drops a 45 automatic clip. And we open this one, also a mummy. But this mummy drops a museum plaque. And it reads Demon Mask. That we do want. In fact, we don't want this automatic clip. We're going to just leave that here. One more mummy for our trouble. Another automatic clip. sheet of paper. As the time when Belphegor will enter the world draws near, Sven and the constellations of Orion shall be swallowed by darkness. Then shall Abareth depart, for his work will be complete. The gate to the endless void will open as darkness swallows the light. Now that's a clue to how to get rid of, uh, not Belphegor, but Belleth. Nope, that was an illusion too. Oh, careful now. Don't want to walk into that symbol. Alright, so here's a safe room. Do we need a rest yet? Nope. I'm really surprised I've gone this far without having to rest. Let's sneak up on that mummy. So much for that idea. some healing. A little meditating too. Mm -hmm. 
with this yes Ah, oh, we have Obsidian Shards of Annihilation. Dark is the power, dark is the night. Dark are the demons which provide its might. Alright, we now know a new spell. That's all there is over here. Locked door. In fact, why don't we take a look at that spell? There are the winds of destruction. There we go. Give that a little extra boost. In fact, we'll give every spell a little extra boost. Maybe not every spell. Most of them. It's locked. Try that again. Alright, thankfully there's no mummy there. Alright, that is three. Three pressure. Three pressure plates. Ah! Alright, they blasted me. That's what I get. I'm going a little too fast. There's a mummy behind us. The mantle of endurance. When made tangible through devious conjuration, the mantle provides vigor, fortifies the body, and improves the health. So that's a spell that will up our stamina. There's the mummy. Near you. There's another symbol. Well, we can't pick up that fungus. I don't want to pick up that fungus anyways. Bad fungus. A message written in blood. Since I escaped, I have hidden in the temple where Robert will never think of looking for me. He doesn't know that I know the way. I also know those things which look most inviting are often most dangerous. And where there is re real danger, something inviting may also be found. They think me mad, but I know more than all of them. I do not face walls. Well, that's a hint about these symbols that can hurt us. Ooh, an M16 assault rifle. But nope. It was also an illusion. Are you an illusion? Yes. Mind you. Alright, we are now in the observatory. A Kabbalistic symbol? A Kabbalistic symbol? A symbol depicting death and decay carved into the floor. 
This map of the heavens has the constellation of Orion marked clearly upon it. This hanging brazier, brazier contains heated coals. Skylight. Let's open it up. The, the telescope is pointed towards the skylight. As the stars shift, you sense that Avalet has now left the Earth. Now, I could have sworn we were supposed to use the astrolabe on there. But now Avalet is gone. Uh oh. You know what? That's never happened before. I've never had that ghostly apparition appear and drain my health. Alright, well, we've done what we're supposed to do in here. Abeleth is now gone. And we can... Oh, hello, mummy. We can now explore the lower levels without him interfering. That was easy. Ooh, what's this? Malevolent compression. This ancient Arabic spell was used to place a freak in the bottles. It will also considerably reduce other foes. Well, let's learn it. So that spell will shrink down our enemies and make them less dangerous. Another one I never really used. You know what might be a good idea? Healing. Alright, well, we've used up our crystal. The metal door is locked. Now let's try compressing this guy. Ooh. There we go. Tiny! Look at him! A tiny little mummy! Had to use up pretty much all our magic though. Alright, so we step on the fourth pressure plate, and the walls explode. Actually, all the walls have exploded. We can get in these little rooms here, but we can more easily go around them by clicking these buttons. But then mummies. Ah, oh, that's good. That was a real one. Is that a real first aid kit? Sure is. Actually, let's save it before we start healing. And these slots here. This coin-sized slot is fixed to the wall. Well, we have things that are coins and coin-sized. You may even remember that we were told that we need the Chinese coins. Good, another magic crystal. Try to get our magic up as high as we can.
get our health up nice and high too. Alright, let's go pick up our coins and that heart. Which I believe I had enough sense to leave right here. And the walls disappear. We have an extra coin left over, don't we? Not only that, the coins are now on the ground. So if I can pull this off, we're going to grab all of them. We're now going to put each coin into one of these urns here. Bowls, I guess. On top of a stone pillar stands a burnished metal bowl. But now, see that we've blocked off all the other ways out of here. We're going to put our last coin into this one, and that's going to summon the Karsus. I'm going to save the game first. Let's put our last coin into the last bowl. Bam, there he is. Over 300 years ago, I forged a pact with Belphegor. Eternal life, the continued service of my bloodline. Generation after generation, my descendants have all been influenced through my bidding, and have all been rewarded with betrayal and death. Now that you, the last Winthrop, are here, the final rite of summoning can be held. Your blood must flow so that Belphegor, Lord of the Dark Triumvirate, and walk the earth. You have my heart. Do not harm it. It is the only thing that keeps me tied to the earthly plane. Belphegor tricked me into making the pact. I spent all these years in torment. Give me my heart, and I will give you the secrets of Belphegor's destruction. My freedom in exchange for the knowledge needs to rid Winthrop House of a centuries-old horror. Well, now we have the choices. We neither give the heart to the Karsis, or destroy the heart. Well, I have never once, ever, in the times I played this game, ever given this creature his heart. Because that just reeks of a terrible idea. I always pick destroy the heart. Well, here's what happens when you pick destroy the heart. No, do not! As the Karsis dies, you feel his magical power fill you with energy. He dies, but he leaves a note. Now, we're not going to look at the note. What we're actually going to do is load the game and see what happens if we actually give him his heart. Players now off. No, I want the player on.
All right, now it's time to give him the heart. You fool. Now you shall die. All right, so it's boss fight time. This is the first time I've ever even taken a look at this guy. Now, I was under the impression he works just like the mummies. And that having the Ghetto Blaster on would help us. Okay, let's see if I can drop the briefcase. Put our spellbook on, come on. Oh, we did it. We're a little banged up. Now let's read the note that he leaves. A sheet of unknown substance. I prepared this advice to appear in the event of my destruction. For my death can only mean that I've been betrayed by my master, the beast. Find the meteorite fragment in the temple of the sea demons, and take it to the room of skulls. You must do this to have any chance of defeating the beast. So there we go. There's what happens. Now we can leave. Actually, we don't need the batteries of the Ghetto Blaster anymore, so let's drop those. Thank you for your service. We will need the Mine Effigy, though. Alright, now back in the chain room. make our way back into the normal, the normal parts of the mansion. So that's just about it. I think we're ready to call it an episode, actually. But since we have this plaque, we might as well go use it real quick. Also got all that experience, I might as well use it. Yeah, let's pump up our willpower. And I've got a little more meditation and a little more blades. of equipment over here. Alright, well the gross little slimes are still crawling around. Well, they should still be crawling around. I don't see them. There's one. So we need our Hand of Glory, but I know exactly where the Demon Mask is, so we should be able to get to it pretty quick. Not the Katana. Not the Katana, thank you.
Kim is giving me a hard time. But now we get the Demon Mask. The Demon Mask? This type of lacquered mask is worn by samurais to scare their enemies and bolster their own spirits. It makes us even more powerful. So we will have an easier time dealing with our enemies. And that, I think, will do it. That will be today's episode. And I thank you all for watching. And when we get together next time, we're going to go down into the mausoleum. I'll see you then.